all right guys what's up uh thank you for clicking on the video just trying to get my sync here uh you're watching night drive live my name is damien knight so we're continuing with the uh, daily show here in week three something i've been experimenting with uh quite a bit trying to change things up so if this is your first time watching or if you're seeing this recorded version afterwards please uh consider subscribing to just give it a test i do uh do these shows five days a week may tweak it as we go but uh i always thank you for watching so in the beginning here i'm going to give you a little breakdown of what we're going to talk about today obviously as you can see on screen ralph gillies who is uh you know in charge of srt brand has done a lot of different development he's been in fca for quite some time uh just because of the current auto show situation a lot of things a lot of these automakers are kind of battling for internet space and they want to get some clicks and some hype so uh ralph G uh, gillies who has now uh changed positions after the fall of srt brand uh he released this leak of the uh potential future of dodge here this is a rendering they say they are looking at internally that's going to be something interesting we're going to look at obviously i'm going to bring up the let me i didn't think that was that large but obviously the thumbnail shows you uh an, a 60 you know 7 camaro in this uh sense obviously has a massive uh open down pipe coming out the fender uh but this is a uh a particular type of vehicle you'll see up see up top there this way this way you see up above what it says a brake, a certain type of brake. i can't say that word on here otherwise i'm going to have issues so when i say something break you know what i'm talking about if you look at that up there we're going to talk about those and we're going to talk about what what the internet's infatuation is with these but why they never sell and why they've just been rendered and rendered and rendered for 80 years people love them but people hate them it's a it's a big subject and we're going to get into that and we're going to go pretty deep so stick around for that one and then we're also going to talk about uh toyota's massive leak toyota uh, toyota has unleashed their master plan on twitter uh in trying to get more uh excitement because they're missing these auto shows so that's what we're going to talk about all today here folks stick around stick with me you're watching night drive live forced induction fabricator engine management tuner shop owner i wanted to start a daily show about everything automotive you're watching night drive live <laughs> that's right guys so i'm uh boy i've been kind of scrambling today to get everything to uh together so i apologize for a little bit of uh a little bit of missteps here i'm just trying to get things in order but uh so the interesting thing the big leak here for today from toyota was uh through twitter and this uh there there's a couple things that are kind of coming out about the successor to the brz uh the gt86 uh, we're talking about a new forerunner and so essentially the next generation uh, 86 is now going to be called the gr86 and um, that was the vehicle i showed here so they have released this uh, throughout the entire life of the brz and what was initially started as the what i think it was a scion initially kind of evolved to the uh, gt86 they were little naturally aspirated cars everybody wanted the sti version wanted the turbo version never got it um, and they're going to continue with the platform and so this is a really compact little go-kart like and they're gonna they're talking about uh 252 horsepower and probably a 2.4 liter flat four so uh the sti motor is a two and a half liter so i suspect they'll probably de-stroke this uh, just enough put a little bit longer rod in it uh that's going to be my guess and so we'll we'll see if i'm right when the time comes but uh that typically gives you a little more piston dwell time uh gives you a little bit more uh flexibility when it comes to timing and volatility in the in the uh, combustion chamber so i suspect that's probably what they're going to do but they said they wanted to retain the character and livability of an na car um so might see something like small turbo try and get some torque that long rod and sacrificing stroke cost you a little bit of torque if you go real small turbo things like that you can really get that mid-range so we'll probably see something like that in the car uh they said expect material fit and finish to improve uh no war tarzan what's up i told you i struggle with that one every time obviously throw me a comment guys if you're watching i appreciate knowing uh that you're there 
but uh yeah so this is going to be under the gazoo racing brand if you're not familiar with gazoo racing and gr86 is probably what this is going to be i kind of looked up the history so uh gazoo racing as you may hear uh kind of in the news it has to do with the supra and, and with a lot of the racing side of toyota at this point kind of goes back quite a ways so apparently uh in japan gazo uh, means image and so the president of uh toyota many years ago uh when the internet was just kind of starting in the late 90s he's really getting big in japan um they started a website for images of cars to sell used toyotas and uh he basically uh gazo for image was kind of evolved into gazoo.com and so they they registered that many many years ago and uh so essentially the engineers as they've said they've felt that the image of a variety of high performance cars in a garage uh they said gazoo kind of became synonymous with the term, the term garage and so somehow this evolved into gazoo racing so this is kind of like toyota's m brand i guess their m side or the uh, like the srt of toyota so that's what we're going to see but let me show you what what uh, was said here in this leak uh this massive leak from toyota so they obviously talked about the gr86 and the turbocharged engine they let that go they said a new camry refresh in 2021 avalon refresh in 2022 uh they even talked about the forerunner and a sequoia new ones coming in 2022 uh all new 2021 tundra that will ride on a new chassis uh twin turbo v6 i mean massive uh leaks that they put out there and so this is just the current situation uh is just leading to all these brand to kind of scramble to get the word out and get some clicks but the most interesting thing and it's buried way down here that people fi may find very interesting i know i did is that they said that the land cruiser on the other hand the land cruiser we've seen uh, throughout history kind of go through a lot of different iterations it was a very functional rugged vehicle then it became very luxurious like uh, kind of comp competitor to, to Range Rover, they said that that's over. They said they're going to turn it in, uh, turn it into a stripped out off roader, and lose any sort of luxury focus in the favor of hardcore off roading. So we may see the Land Cruiser become a new Bronco uh, and Jeep competitor. So this is going to be very exciting because I think that's exactly where that truck belongs. Uh, it's such a great brand. Lots of people love the old Land Cruisers, and uh, so I'm just totally excited to hear about that. So let's hope that's what happens um but for now yeah lots of leaks coming out so i mean obviously anytime on twitter anything like that uh you just know no telling what they're going to leak at this point so i usually have my this is how behind i was i usually have my icons all removed so let's get to the you're like what is this this is this is supposed to be current news well this is complicated so if you've seen the thumbnail and you're like okay that's a cool looking most people react to shooting brakes in a very positive way and that's very interesting like even somebody texted me hey man look at that thumbnail that, like that's awesome and here he is talking about my red shirt all the time so i wanted to explain to people if you are not familiar or don't understand what a shooting break is it's kind of complicated and uh it's just one of those terms that we hear throughout history throughout time but it has always kind of evolved and changed slightly and uh, it's a definite more European term than it is American, but uh, I'm going to go through and kind of hopefully clear this all up for you. So at the end of this video, you're going to absolutely know what a shooting break is. So, uh, so let's start here. Uh, so this is a shooting break, and essentially the idea was is it was a buggy to break in uh, horses, and so uh, basically they would take people out hunting, uh, take the dogs with them, they put a heavy buggy, and they'd strap on the young crazy horses and they would break them in so that's where the term kind of originates so uh in france now when you get into uh 19th century england let me say first um a break was like any wagon or carriage uh that, like i said to break in the young and then france it, it kind of became hunting break it kind of evolved and so uh we see the first motorized shooting break here and so you can see it's kind of a car a two-seater something functional with a lot of room to carry dogs hunting equipment and that was the idea you go out in the bush you hunt it's like a vehicle with a little bit more functional storage space so this isn't a station wagon it was a shooting break at that point so uh that term kind of uh, just endured in europe mostly and so then i'm like well is would that make like an suv with a bunch of power like an escalade or something is that a shooting break well no it's not so it's not just about the storage space it's just a bunch of small details and that's where it gets complicated so in 1960 alpine came out with this idea they took their little sports car didn't sell well and they said well maybe we'll make it a little bit more 
uh, masculine, so to speak. So they got the idea to make it a shooting break. So, oh, and I said it already. There we go. So that's we can't say that. I'm telling you, demonetized out of there. But uh, yeah, so they they added this. They put this thing on the rear, and they said, okay, that's going to be that version. So companies followed, and so we can see Aston Martin here, and a lot of people like it visually, and I think it's because of the kind of proportion of design to where you have a more weight in the rear, kind of to the bias, to the you know a rear bias like an E-type Jag, and so look, people even did these with Mustangs. I mean, this was something that was very popular and and not a lot and and some people hate it some people say it's horrendous this was an old volvo and they even did it with corvettes and these were internal uh within uh gm look i mean you can see that they were going to do it with the uh with the thunderbird so it's like the idea kind of evolved to where you have a sporty car and you want extra storage space it's taking something very sporty very very uh, fun to drive and adding functional space to it where you normally didn't have any so that's kind of how it started to evolve but then we see this here and we see a Countach mid-engine. Obviously, this is a crazy rendering because I, I, I don't know if the engine's behind the seats or it, just a rendering. Some renderings are just never possible, and that's that's definitely one of them. Um, but, but even today, we see these constant renderings of different types of versions of this brake. And this is a Camaro here. Lots of people do that. And this was this is real. You can actually the company Callaway took the C7 Corvette, realized we can make these tops. So they actually you can buy that. You can take the hatch off of your Corvette, and you can put that top on, and you are essentially converting it. And you can see it's just a small how much cubic space it is really gained. I mean uh, two, you know, but it's just that e e itty bitty bit. So here we see somebody has done one with a Challenger. They threw a wide body on it, a little bit of functional space. So now this is a four seater. But it's a little bit extra space over the trunk. So it, it, it's like the shooting brake always shows you. I said it again, it's just all over, folks. I can't break it. Uh, here, the Camaro kind of takes on this uh, more coupe esque feel with a, a back, but two doors, two doors, right? And so there went the old 69 converted. It's a cool look. It's interesting. But when it comes to buying them, no one buys them. So that's the weird part. Everybody loves them. It gets lots of clicks. But then when a company actually says, okay, well, let's sell you one, they just never sold well. Uh, the Alpine only ended up building three. They've endured through Aston Martin, through Ferrari. They just don't sell very well. And here the BMW Z3, which has a cult-like following. They call this car the clown shoe uh, because some people just don't like the proportion. And it just depends on the proportion. Some look better than others. And this one is extremely popular, but it's very low volume. And this was obviously the GTC4 Lusso Ferrari, which was the successor to the Ferrari FF. It was all-wheel drive, four-seater, has that little bit of extra capacity in the back. People who drive them and own them say they're the best ones that you can buy. You get a sports car out of the deal. You get a little extra volume. Maybe you throw your dog in the back. But here we go. We continue to evolve. So the question then becomes, what is this? So this is a crossover. Now today we see this is a crossover. So a crossover is essentially a bulked up raised version of like a four door. Say that's like an M3, but it's bulked up. The belt line is higher. The belt line being this here the window line that, that's what the belt line is so as crash standards and things have evolved all vehicles have kind of gotten taller this is where you get the camaro uh that kind of gets the windows everything gets squished because we're bringing that belt line up for safety so this is where people say well i want a sports car but i want to bounce into my driveway i, I want some ground clearance so here you got a crossover so how do I convert a crossover into kind of a shooting brake? Because you're going to see the shooting brakes are not just two doors anymore. See that little bump I put there? Look at this little bump. Boom. Boom. Look in the back. Look in the back. So, so that's the start of how you make a shooting brake. Bring it down a little bit. Now do I have a shooting brake? That's the question. And so that's where it comes into play that we have seen the evolution of the shooting brake. I've given up by now. Mercedes says this is one. So I'm thinking, is this not a station wagon? BMW says that's one. Clearly four doors. So Panamera now, is that one? No. Panamera said this is a sport coupe. And I'll show you how they convert it to a shooting brake because they do have one, they say. Boom. You see that little bump? No bump. Add a bump. Boom. Boom little bit more extra storage but four seater four door so not a station wagon shooting brake see from the side shooting brake shooting brake 
So now BMW says we're not going to be done yet. We're going to take an SUV. We're going to take this little compact, uh, which uh, is that a shooting brake? I don't even know. It's rear wheel drive. Uh, has a little extra space. If it had a little bump here, I bet you it would be. But they take that, and so they come up with renderings that now say that that's a shooting brake. So now it's like basically an M8 chassis, coupe, a little bit extra space in the back, got a shooting brake. Shooting brake. So I'm like CTSV wagon. So you tell me, shooting brake or not shooting brake? They called it a wagon. I say I can convert it to a shooting brake. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm going to convert it. Bam. Shooting brake. There you go. <laughs> That's all you got to do. <laughs> Non-shooting brake, shooting brake. So that's how you do it. Now, what's this? This is uh, this is not one. This is a crossover. And the crossover, now you have sport SUVs. You got all these different definitions. So where does the shooting brake lie? Two-door, wagon-esque, shooting brake. So if it's two doors and has an extent, look, somebody even made a C8 one. If it's two doors and has an extension on the back, it's definitely a shooting brake. If it's a four door, it can't have too much behind the seats. It has to just kind of swoop down. It has to have a swooping roof line. That's a shooting brake. So two door, extra storage, shooting brake. Four door, slightly extra storage, shooting brake. Too much extra storage becomes a wagon. Pagani Waira, want a shooting brake? Somebody did one. Now what's that? It's a hatchback, subcompact. So it gets a little interesting. So let me just tell you, what is that? Now you're like, okay, that's a, it's a Mini. Mini has defined this as a subcompact crossover SUV. <laughs> so this is, this is the words, folks, the marketing of words. And so this is where things get very interesting. And so I'm like, I'm going to ask you, this is your final test. What is it? What is it? Now, four doors, remember the rules, four doors, slightly more. Not too much. Can't be a wagon. This is called a sport brake. Jaguar XF sport brake. So there it is. Two doors, add a little space. If you turn a sports car into a little extra space, you get a shooting brake. Four door, you add a, li a little extra space behind the fourth seat, the, the back seat, you get a shooting brake. Too much, you, begin, you get into a wagon. Somewhere in between, Jaguar says it's a sport brake. So there you go. Now we know what's, what shooting brakes are. Hopefully that clears everything up and uh, that's done for. And let me see here. So the question I was looking around, some people may be familiar, the SRT8 uh, 300. They talk about some of the lost muscle cars. This is something I want to talk about maybe in an upcoming show is, you know, there's a lot of these little lost muscle cars that I'm curious. People don't like them. They weren't very popular. This is one. Uh, this is one here, which is the Chevrolet SS, not very popular. You got the G8, which is discontinued. A lot of this was connected to Holden in Australia. The Holden brand is gone, but these cars, they came with LS motors in them. Uh, 415 horsepower in a lot of cases, the LS3s were in these. So uh, I, I have to wonder about the evolution of what these cars will do value-wise. Uh, these are kind of very interesting, all trying to target themselves at the M brand and at BMW and AMG, and it never really worked out. They were just kind of too cheap, uh, too clunky. Obviously, the downturn eliminated the Pontiac brand. But uh, see, these are some cars that I'm going to be watching because I'm curious what's going to happen with them. Uh, they're getting kind of forgotten about, but you just look at them and you expect there to be like a four-cylinder, maybe a V6 in there. Some of these have LS motors in them. Some of them have manual transmissions in them. So, um, you know, it's just interesting to see what the future may hold for some of these types of cars. And uh, some people, obviously, in this case, uh, they're picking that up. They're realizing, hey, there's something to build there. Uh, something fun can be made out of these you know will they be drift missiles who knows what people will make of them but uh oh here you go z06 audi s7 uh, on the shooting brake so i will tell you right now i'm not a huge eh, not a shooting brake i don't think it's a shooting brake let's see now see they this is this weird like this is what the the tesla model s kind of got into this deal with with this design to where you know and so did some of these newer cadillacs what are they i mean it's like it's a four-door but it's not uh you know but it's not because it has a hatchback but if it if it punched it out just a wee i bet they would call it a shooting brake i feel like that's exactly now do they have one i'm not super familiar with the audi brand uh, so yeah see if they punched this rear out so this is like the car version of a of a crossover 
its crossovers became like this higher belt line lifted in the air a little bit this is like a crossover body brought down to the ground uh, and made into essentially like a, a typical car to where it's a little bit lower center of gravity a little bit better handling a little bit you know it's so weird how these brands and especially european brands german they all kind of slice and dice that little space which is like the one car do it all they want four seats they want some room they want big brakes they want lots of power and so it's like the crossover in these definitely fight in that space if you need a little bit more ground clearance you know just depends and it's such a weird battle space that's evolving and it seems to be obviously getting more popular it's why it's why i said when when ford said we're going to stop making sedans you know they, and blamed it on chinese uh you know trade wars and stuff completely untrue it, it's because the the market demand is all in suvs crossovers all these combination platforms that give you like more than one overall purpose you know cars are much simpler back in the day they were like coupes sports cars with two seats uh you know everything was very clearly defined we've muddled everything together and electric cars even had two tesla ads to it now you get sports car performance at least in a straight line um and you've got this kind of platform of you or you've got an suv so people are starting to just want everything and that's where the you know how big do you get how long do you get it's just so interesting to watch how these brands and obviously they put so much time in the teams of people f try to think about this how do we make the next thing that that just you know bumps up the cargo space in our in our sect uh, or in our sector you know in our segment and so they that's what they always are after so it's just crazy to uh, see the redefining and rewording of, of so many different basic cars but yeah it's just uh it's all mixed together today so yeah i don't know folks that's a quick one i um i tried to prepare for this one the shooting break got me off I, i'm like i gotta just get to the bottom of the shooting break thing for people so tried to go with the shooting breaks but uh whew, i'm wore out so thank you for watching guys appreciate it if you haven't caught the show before i'm trying a lot of different things folks trying to figure out a pattern and a method here uh may may continue to do these live may pre-record these not sure yet i've been playing and trying to just kind of figure out how things need to be but uh, i do feel that my pre-packaged pre-recorded videos get a lot better views uh, and get a lot better response and um, so i'm just i'm constantly kind of trying to figure out how i want to evolve this so if you've watched the video if you've seen these most people aren't getting to the end of these the analytics show that these perform very poorly compared to my pre-recorded stuff and the other videos i have on my channel so uh always trying to evolve and pivot uh, before i invest too much energy and um so let me know in the comments if you get this far by any chance uh what you think of the overall show check out some of my other shows and other videos um, i'm obviously going to continue to do the videos like i uh, i have done on the on the platform which is you know modding corvettes and doing stuff like that so <laughs> breaks for guns i was wrong yeah so it, you know i i tell you joe the big thing i knew coming into this is it's it's just a car but i knew using that word in the title will probably alone tank this video um, and the more i say it on here the more that it will get categorized as something that has to do with uh god knows what uh this is the nature of filtered internet today and so i've learned the hard way many times believe me so um yeah it, it, anytime we talk about any of this stuff it just it just ruins the video so so it's out of the way now but uh yeah i'll see what happens guys i'm gonna think about how i want to do this and continue to do this i'm uh, constantly trying to reinvent and figure things out and and evolve so let me know in the comments what you think any suggestions improvements changes i'm always open to that kind of stuff but other than that guys i'm gonna head out see you on the next one thank you for watching